Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Alexandrian House uh, with our guest, Dr. Emmanuel Gilgis. Welcome, Dr. Emmanuel. Welcome. Thank you, Karim. After speaking about the human person, um, we know that humanity is divided into two types, male and female. Um, but we want to understand more, is, is being male and female something purely biological for um, just for the context, context of procreation? Or is there something deeper than that on an ontological level uh, where maleness and femaleness have, have a deeper meaning to our identities? Uh, of course, the topic of human anthropology, again, is a topic that is, is we're scratching the surface of what that field is in Christianity. There are a lot of uh, theories and opinions out there. Uh, as we discussed, there is no particular dogma uh, about uh, the question of who is a human being. However, um, I do have a specific um, theological uh, opinion and presentation to, to try and address this uh, question. Um, I do believe that when we speak about human beings uh, being created in the image and likeness of God. We've got to uh, unpack this a little bit further and start walking through what that really means. Mm -hmm. So we say that we are made in the image and likeness of God. Now is God a singularity or is God a trinity? God is a trinity. Mm -hmm. We just discussed you know, the, the trinity. And therefore when we're speaking about image and likeness we're not speaking about an image and likeness of a singularity, but an image and likeness of a diversity in unity. Mm. Uh, we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. And those persons, while they are one in essence, mm -hmm. they are three persons. Yes. These three persons are not identical. In fact, each of them acts a specific role. role. And that role is not uh, duplicated among the other persons. So, for example, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is not incarnate and he's not crucified. Whereas the Son does not hover over the water and <laughs> did not come, you know, on, 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 in, in, in a shape or a shape form of, of a dove or tongues of fire. So, ultimately, within God himself, yeah. There is the commonality, what is common, what is shared, and there is what is particular, the particularity, right? So from that standpoint, then we start thinking, okay, if we say that humanity is made in the image and likeness of God, and God is a model of diversity within unity, or a diversity in unity, how does that apply to our creation? Mm. And one can't help but think, well, we are an image and likeness of that diversity in unity. Mm. Maleness and femaleness are both or both represent one shared nature. Mm. But then those two types have particularities. When we speak about God, we say things in the absolute. So for example, uh, God is love. This is a shared characteristic between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is love, the Son is love, and the Holy Spirit is love. Whereas there are unshareable roles and characteristics. Mm. So the Son is the Son and is not the Father. The Father is the Father and not the Son or the Spirit, and so on and so forth. Those um, characteristics also are closely tied to their existential role, mm. right? So the son, uh, the son's role was to be what? The express image of the father. And by virtue of this role, when it was time to reveal God to humanity in a visible form, it was the son who is the express image who was tasked with the role of the incarnation. True. Because he is the express image of the Father. Of the Father. Right? 
So therefore, there is an intrinsic relationship between role and person, where mm. there is a specific role that is played by a specific person. person. And when we look at ourselves, being in this image of likeness, one also has to look at the same analogy. So, uh, both men and women have a shared humanity. Mm -hmm. So, we're all made of flesh and bones. We have a soul, we have a mind, we have a heart. This is what's shared. But then, we have a particularity mm -hmm of expression and a particularity, a particularity of role. Mm -hmm. Then we have this maleness and femaleness yes. that is attributed to persons. So mm -hmm. that is the role that is attributed or attached to the person of a male versus the person of a female. And those two, in my opinion, come from the image and the likeness. Okay. So let me elaborate. Please. We see that, uh, again, I will refer back to St. Irenaeus in his um, statement that the, both the, the Son and the Holy Spirit are, again, the, the, hands of the hands of God that are working in the world, mm. that are working in the world. And this is exactly how we are. We are two hands of God yes. that are working in the world. In the world. Now, this working has, in in, in, the, in the case of God, has those two manifestations, the Son and the Spirit, right? In our case as humanity, we have male and female. Now, in order to delve deeper into the topic of maleness and femaleness, we must also look at uh, the manifestation and the representation of the Trinity uh, in their work on earth, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to ask ourselves a very important question. When our Lord Jesus Christ was incarnate, mm. he came in the form of a man. a man, specifically a man, a male form, yes. and not a female form. True. Now, when people hear this for the first time, they're going to say, oh, are you a sexist? Are, <laughs> are, you know, are women not saved? No, no, just exactly. hold your horses. There is a very particular thing that we need to highlight here. Mm -hmm. Christ's incarnation was important because it had to save two aspects of humanity. The shared and the particular. The shared and the particular. Therefore, in his incarnation in human form, God saves humanity. So he, he saves the shared human mm. Uh, experience nature, or, or nature but then he also has to save the roles that are attached to the persons mm -hmm. so he has to save maleness and he has to save femaleness so how does he accomplish that and why is it significant that he comes in a male form and not a female form and where is the Holy Spirit from all of that mm. all right what is the role of maleness and femaleness? Great. Um, we, 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 we see that from Christ, in Christ and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Well, what does Christ do? He is the high priest. Mm -hmm. He comes to earth. He takes the form of a servant, specifically male form. And then he does what? He practices priesthood. Yes. What does a priest do? What does a, a priest celebrate every week? In the Eucharist. The Eucharist. Yeah. So the priest, the priest's Office. role is to offer thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving, right? But this thanksgiving is in response to something. Meaning, I don't just start a conversation by saying, thank you, Karim. Mm. That's awkward. You must have done something that I'm then responding to by saying, thank you, Karim. Right? Yes. Exactly. What is that? What is that thing that you did that deserves me saying back, thank you, Karim? Mm. It's a gift. Exactly. So you gave me a gift. And, and you're thanking me for it. I'm the thanking gift. you for it, right? Mm. In Greek, we say, charis. 
Charis means grace or gift. And we humans receive grace from God. We received our creaturelyhood. We received life, right? Mm -hmm. And in response, we turn back and say, Ev Charis. Mm -hmm. Charis is gift. Ev means good. So you, you receive the Charis, you receive the gift. Yeah, the gift. And then you, you're turning around and saying, oh, good gift. Good gift. Thank you. Like, yes. if charis, this is where we get the word Eucharist, if charisto, if charisteia, charisteia. right? Yeah. So we are saying, thank you, God, thank you God for, for what you gift. have given, for the gift, mm -hmm. right? Okay. What was the gift? It was life. It was life. Mm -hmm. In the first instance, it was life. In the second instance, it was also life, meaning yes. after death, He's again giving us life. So yeah, in both cases, life. we're thanking him for first life and second life. Yes. <laughs> right? Okay. So Christ's role, therefore, on earth was to offer back what is God's back to God. Okay. We offer you what is yours. Right? We're By using saying, what God gave us to thank him. To thank him. Yes. Right? Okay. So he's offering. He's yes. offering humanity back to God, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So he's saying, thank you. And that is the priestly role, which he did in, in the flesh. He's offering humanity back to God by saying, thank you, God, for the gift of life. I offer this life back to you, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so the significance of Christ's incarnation in male form specifically male form, is that he is fulfilling the role of the male. The male. Yes. All right. So what about the woman? Mm -hmm. And this is where you know, everyone is, you know, sitting on, on the edge of their chairs oh. and, and, and <laughs> in What is a woman sharing? Right, right, what's yeah, what's okay. sharing? Well, first of all, before we get there and we, we discuss how Christ accomplished the salvation of femaleness, through his incarnation as a male, let us first look at femaleness in itself. Just like we looked in, into maleness in itself through Christ, mm -hmm. and so we now lo look at the, 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 the male and know that our role is to do that. To give thanks to, to God. Give thanks to to, God, to, to offer back, to serve, right, mm -hmm. to all these things. We also ought to look at the woman within herself first, Mm. To see, okay, if so, uh, of course, I'm alluding to the fact that that the role of, a, of the woman, therefore, is kind of ingrained uh, or rooted in the role of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I want to pause here just for a, a tad and say, um, some people will hear this and say, well, uh, you know, that means it's a lesser role. And I've heard it okay. before in, in, in certain occasions. Mm -hmm. And I just want to preface by saying this is an absolutely erroneous view of the Trinity. Because the Trinity, they're all equal. They're all equal. The, the, no role is better than, than the, the other. other. And there is not a, a role that glorifies one person over the other. The other. Right? There are diverse roles exactly. that are equal. Right? On what basis do you level roles? Exactly. I mean, like, right? Okay. Exactly. So let's just weed this out so that we, we know wh where we are. Yeah. So now looking at the role of the Holy Spirit, we have to find, uh, uh, we have to look at two very significant things. First of all, we call the Holy Spirit the life giver. The life giver. Well, in this earthly life, who is the life giver? Oh, it's the woman. She the, gives birth. She gives birth. Yeah. She, okay. So here is one um, element. But then there is something very significant scripturally that we have to look at. Upon the creation of Eve, God said, let us make a help meet mm. for Adam because it's not good for him to be alone. So let us make a help meet, not a help mate. A help help meet. meet. What does help meet mean? What does that mean? It means meet means equal. Mm -hmm. so meet and right. Yes. Uh, or like just meet. Like meet is like being equal. And then help. 
Now, what do we call the Holy Spirit? Pantocrat. No, Paraclete. Paraclete. Para means next to, mm. assistant, right? Yes. And Clito, uh, sorry, Clitos means uh, assistant or helper. Yes. And uh, para means uh, next to. Next to. So mm. next to means equal, and Clitos uh, means helper. So it's the same it's, uh, adjective it's the same. that was used to describe Eve. Eve, ah, right? So it is the help meet. Mm. Uh, both that was said about Eve and the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the femaleness takes its model after or role after the model of the The Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, back to the question, how did Christ through his incarnation as a male save the role of, because he, he saved already, as we discussed, he saved the commonality. Yes. He saved the nature. Yes. But how did he also save the role? Right, so we said that he saved the role of male mm. because he himself participated in satisfying or in mm. fulfilling the role of the priest or the uh, if charis part, right? Yeah. But he also, as a male, fulfills the role of the female. How does he accomplish that? Well, uh, we just said that the role of the spirit is life giver. The role of the female is life life giver. Now let's pause there for a moment. Every every human attempt to give life, Mm -hmm. every human attempt to give life from the beginning has ultimately resulted in failure. In death. In death. So every fruit of a a female womb womb ultimately died. Eve, all her children died. Everyone afterwards, everyone died. The first human being who survives death and fulfills the role of life-giving is the son of Mary, Jesus Christ. Mm. Right? Therefore, Mary becomes the first woman to give life. To give life in its absolute sense. Life that never dies. And so by Mm. being incarnate in a male form... He both saves the role of the male and the role, of, and the the role of the female because he is the first born of women who survives and actually lives forever. So mm. this is how we look at maleness and femaleness based on the very basic premise mm. that we are created in the image, image and likeness, likeness of God. Of God. So... Um, I think it's important after hearing that, that we concentrate that we shouldn't be looking at each other's roles in comparing levels, yes. but just living the identity that God gave each one of us. Yes, and we must also realize that these roles, even though they are currently not being represented equally, they are equal. Mm-hmm. They are equal. Uh, however, our attempts to represent this are, are failing and mm. they, they are failing because of the nature of the fall itself. Let me uh, give you an example. One of the consequences of the fall mm. was the divine command that he shall rule over you. Exactly. Now, now this was not the case earlier. Where she was, there was a help meet. Uh, she was a help meet. So, so the equality was always there. Mm-hmm. But then one of the consequences of the fall was that one would uh, rise above the other, not by design, but as a function of the fall. Okay. So, so, um, so what what I inte- what I mean to say is, just because we are still living in this state of brokenness where one is ruling above the other does not mean that intrinsically, innately, the role of the woman is Is of lesser value. It is just the way it is now represented in the fallen environment. environment. But it does not mean at all that her role uh, is any less than male. Uh, But it's just how it's being represented in our skewed uh, dimension of of space and time. Because at... Like uh, uh, at the goal of life, 
she will also reach the image and likeness of God in as, its totality. In totality, as, in its, as a man. Yes, yes. There's, there's now, no difference there. one other thing to clarify here is um, some people will will hear what I said and think, but wait, are you saying only that men are in the image of Christ, not women? No, that's not what I'm saying. Let's be very clear. I'm saying that we are all in the image of likeness in, of God. In the image of likeness of God, in the image of likeness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, yes. Okay, but what I am discussing is taking after the role. The different roles. The different roles. As they have different roles. So we have, so we have different, roles, different and roles, and our roles are taken after the specific roles of the Son and the Spirit. Not that the woman is not like Christ also. Or not that man is not like the Holy Spirit also, also. right? Yes, I, exactly. I, I just want to be very, very clear about what I'm trying to highlight here. The role, not the, the person, not the totality of the image and likeness. Not the, not the nature. Right. The, the human nature that we have in common yes. is different from the roles that we specifically have. We play have. In, in life. And, and uh, you know, uh, hence... Um, uh, this you know presentation also answers other questions in, in other fields of theology like ecclesiology like the the common question we get is why can't women be priests That's it's true. not because the church is sexist or because <laughs> you know we are hyper masculine or because we are yes, you know exactly uh, you know no it's because yeah. the role it, it's tied to the role it's tied to the role. Uh, not because we uh, are you know racist or sexist because the whatever. man his role is to give thanks in exactly yes and while the woman's role is to give life absolutely none Very is better than that yes simple terms yeah <laughs> okay well thank you dr emmanuel that was very informative so. and it allowed us to reflect on our own, own identities um so that we we embrace who we are and who god created us to be yes thank you dr emmanuel and thank you for everyone for watching another episode of alexandrian house see you next time